الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقا عن بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا بيننا شقيا ولا محموما إنك ولي ذلك والقادر عليك أما بعد We have the ayah number 163 in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدٍ لَا إِلَاهَ إِلَّا هُوَ الرَّحْمَانُ الرَّحِيمُ And your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is one. None worthy of worship but Him, Ar-Rahman, the All-Gracious, Ar-Rahim, the All-Merciful. I want to just spend a few minutes on this one, inshaAllah. We could actually spend endless time talking about this just one ayah. Because of this one ayah and because of this declaration of the article of faith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the heavens and the earth. And because of la ilaha illallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the world of angels and the world of jinn and the world of humans. And because of this declaration of la ilaha illallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the heavens and the earth and has created jannah and now paradise and the hellfire. Because of this declaration of this article, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all the creation. So it is certainly worth spending endless time on it, but in the interest of time, we'll just talk about it briefly, inshallah. First, I want to talk about the conditions of la ilaha illallah. And then I want to talk about the negations of la ilaha illallah. This is something for us to review our deeds and evaluate what we do day in and day out and understand a little bit more in depth of what la ilaha illallah means. وَإِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدٌ Your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. He's not divisible. He does not take children, does not take spouses, does not have any relatives. As he says, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is no one like unto him. To him belongs all the divine names and beautiful attributes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able over everything. These are like part of the conditions of one declaring la ilaha illallah is to know the certainty of knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able over everyone and able over everything. ذَلِكَ لِتَعْلَمُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَحَاطَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عِلْمًا And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His knowledge has encompassed all and everything. In the incident where Khawla comes to the Prophet وسلم, complaining about her husband, saying, أَنْتِ عَلَيَّكَ ظَهْرِ أُمِّي You are, to me, like the back of my mother, an expression that the Arabs in the days of Jahiliyyah and thereafter used in order to say to their wives, I'm not going to have an intimate relationships with you. So they would make that statement. Aisha says, I was in that same room when this woman came to complain to the Prophet and the Prophet is trying to, trying to console her and explain to her that you know, her husband is an old man and to forgive and to be patient. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately sends Jibreel alayhi salam قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ The sin in these ayat, mentioning this woman in the Qur'an that we read day in and day out, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from above seven heavens has heard the complaint of this woman. Aisha radiallahu wa ta'ala says, I was in the same room, I did not hear anything. I did not hear anything. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard her from above seven heavens and he has answered her. So therefore, some of the conditions that we've come to know of la ilaha illallah, that none can provide cure but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None can give help but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we declare this in every salah, in every rak'ah that we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Only you we worship and only you we seek the help of. So therefore, part of la ilaha illallah, and because of la ilaha illallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent all the prophets and the messengers throughout the history of mankind, has descended all the divine revelations. Part of it entails believing in the other articles of faith. al iman billah entails believing in the angels, the divine revelations, the uh, day of judgment, the predestination and preordination, and the, uh, the, the prophets and the messengers. So it entails all of the articles of faith. Hence, we come to the second part of it, which what negates la ilaha illallah. Obviously, entering Islam cannot be but by declaring la ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. 
Exit in Islam entails many things. The first of which is to commit shirk in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To dispose of, of ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated for us in whole or in part to any other entity aside from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that if we were to take any partners, to ask anybody for shifa, to ask anybody for help that none can provide but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ask anybody by, for risk, sustenance, or to think that our risk comes by way of a certain entity or a certain individual, is an act of shirk that is committed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it negates la ilaha illallah. It also, what negates it is voluntarily exiting the state of Islam. For somebody who has embraced Islam, and then later they said, this is too much for me, I, you know, I don't need it, whatever the case might be, and then they reject the faith. That causes one to negate la ilaha illallah. For someone to practice black magic negates la ilaha illallah. For someone to assist a non-Muslim against a Muslim, to take you know, uh, camps, if you will, and aid them fighting the Muslims negates la ilaha illallah. For someone to think that another prophet came after Muhammad sallallahu negates la ilaha illallah. For someone to dispose their dua, to supplicate through the dead, or through an, any entity whatsoever, a stone, an idol, whatever the case might be, even if they declare that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and the sustainer, the cherisher, and so on and so forth, for someone to dispose this ibadah, this dua, which is the peak, you know, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi describes it, Everything we do, we do it for the sake of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so our dua is acceptable to him. So, this, to, so to ask someone for forgiveness, to ask for intercession in this dunya, by way of the living or the dead, even if it is the Prophet sallallahu himself, like you would see people going to Medina, and then making dua, asking the Prophet sallallahu to intercede on our behalf. The Prophet sallallahu is dead. And we see him lying in his grave. We see his grave, not we see him physically. But we recognize his grave and the grave of Abu Bakr and Umar. So to ask him for intercession or to ask him for forgiveness or to ask him for mercy, that's an act of shirk. To slaughter on the graves, you know, that's an act of shirk. Even though people may claim that we only do it so just as, an, as, a, as a way of honoring the dead. This is not the practice that the Prophet ﷺ taught us. Uh, to uh, you know, to think that shifa healing, even if you go to the doctor and you take your medication, to think that healing is in the medicine or in the hands of the doctor is an act of shirk that negates la ilaha illallah. The only shifa that comes is from Allah subhanahu wa taala. To think that someone can return from the dead is an act of shirk, because Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Omu waraihim barzakhun ila yawmi yubathun." To think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ways that he resembles his creation is an absolute act of shirk that negates la ilaha illallah. To think of the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as non-finite, meaning that they are finite and others can partake in that, negates la ilaha illallah. To disbelieve that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has physical qualities and characteristics as he says in the Quran that uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about two hands and he opens them and he closes them in terms of it's an expression of he gives risk abundantly and not so abundantly to whoever he chooses according to his infinite knowledge and infinite wisdom. So to negate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands is an act of shirk. To resemble these or to draw a resemblance between these hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to describe them as finite or to draw a resemblance between them and the hands of the created is an act of shirk that negates la ilaha illallah. In addition to make halal that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made haram or to make haram that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal. In other words, we believe that drinking alcohol is prohibited. So if someone drinks alcohol, we cannot say this negates la ilaha illallah. We say this, they've committed a sin. But for them to come and say, no, this is not haram. It says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْتُمْ سُكَارًا So there's a person who just reads ayat that they like in the Quran and they leave the others. They have no knowledge of what's been revealed first. 
and glass, what's been abrogated and what's not been abrogated. So they come and say, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not come close to Salah in a state of drunkenness. So therefore, after Salah, I can drink, it's permissible. That's a statement of ignorance. And this person would need to be educated. If they insist upon their own, then they have exited the state of Islam and they have negated La ilaha illallah. Because none make halal and haram except the Prophet Sallallahu And of course, first and foremost, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. To believe that anyone can bring you benefit or deter harm from you, aside from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, without the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, is an act of shirk. Because we say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. What is la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah mean? Means none can bring benefit. And none can deter harm but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to think that good and bad can come from another person, even if it's a religious person, even if it's the most righteous person on the face of the earth, even if it's the head of a particular religious group or particular religious sect or so on and so forth, that is an act of shirk. Because we declare that none, even at the time where a person says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ وَشِئْتُ Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills and you will, so the Prophet ﷺ immediately responded, he said, lillahi lidda. You made me a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, if you must, you would say, Ma sha Allah, thumma shit. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, then you will. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَن يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ Your will is only secondary to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever He wills will come to pass. Whatever He does not will, even if the entire humanity and the world of jinn were to gather to make it happen, it shall not happen. It shall not happen. Similarly, to fear none, like we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to love none, like we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which brings us to the second part of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. Muhammadun Rasulullah means la matbu'a bihaqqin illa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. None is rightfully followed as a role model for humanity, as an example for us to follow, except the Prophet Sallallahu So if someone takes their, uh, you know, the Imam of the Masjid, or they take a particular scholar, or a particular uh, leader of a religious sect, and they come and say, whatever they do, I'm going to follow. Whatever they say, I'm going to follow. The fiqh is whatever they explain, whatever they understand. This person is not following the Prophet Sallallahu This person is following his Imam, he's following another person. Is following, uh, you know, another entity that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you know, negates by saying, "لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا." In the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no one else, no one else. In the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is a fine example for us to follow, for those who wish to meet Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on favorable terms and they often frequently remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their istighfar and in their dua and in their dhikr and so on and so forth. So therefore, لا متبوع بحق إلا رسول الله None is rightfully followed except the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلَ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنًا That those who listen to the words of wisdom, to the fiqh, to the understanding of the deen, and they follow the best of it, not those who are fanatic about following a particular sect, or a particular individual, or a particular imam, or a particular scholar. That has no existence in Islam. The role model to us, the finest of all, is the Prophet ﷺ. Similarly, not to love anyone more than we love the Prophet ﷺ, not even ourselves. And we all know of the incident where Umar bin Khattab came and he told the Prophet ﷺ, I love you more than anyone and everything except myself. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, no, your iman is not complete. Then, the, then Umar thought about it and then he later returned. He said, oh Prophet of Allah, I love you more than I love myself. He said, now, now, meaning that we love none but the Prophet ﷺ, and rightfully so. If we just try to enumerate the reasons why we love the Prophet ﷺ, they are endless. Without him, without him as a, as a prophet of mercy, we'd probably be worshipping idols. We'd probably be agnostics. We'd probably be atheists. Huh? We would have no chance of you know, going to paradise. Without him, we would have no fine role model to follow. We would not have that fine you know, ethical standards and characteristics that the Prophet ﷺ has set for us as a walking example of the Qur'an. He taught us, he brought us the Qur'an, he brought us the Sunnah, and he set himself as a role model for us to follow. He is more concerned of us, about us, 
than us of ourselves. He never did us any harm. Oftentimes, we do ourselves much harm, much injustice. We oppress ourselves. But the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that فَقَدْ تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ مَا أَنَخَدْتُمْ بِهِ لَمْ تَضِلُّ بَعْدِ أَبَدَ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّتِي I have left with you where if you are to uphold, you shall never go astray after me. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my sunnah. Our parents cannot say that. Our forefathers cannot say that. No one on the face of the earth can make such a statement. But the Prophet ﷺ can't. He is our intercessor on the Day of Judgment. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows him to intercede on our behalf, our sins, whatever is left of it, are forgiven. And because of him and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost, and then the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are spared from the punishment of the hellfire. We enter into paradise, inshaAllah. So some of these things, if we're just to complain, and, and this list by no stretch of the imagination is comprehensive. This, this list is by no stretch of the imagination is comprehensive. But as we learn and apply, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will teach us more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he says, Ya ladina amanu taqullaha wa aminu bi rasulihi yu'tikum kiflayni min rahmati. Oh, you will believe. Have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And believe in his prophet, meaning that follow him. Meaning that affirming that none is followed rightfully but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam يُؤْتِكُمْ كِفْلَيْنِ مِنْ رُحْمَةِ Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will double your share of mercy وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ نُورًا تَمْشُونَ بِهِ and he will give you a guiding light that you walk in in this dunya and in the hereafter as he says يَوْمَ تَرَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَسْعَى نُورُهُمْ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ بُشْرَاكُمْ on the day when you see the believing men and women, they follow in their light, the light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them in this dunya and the light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given will give them, inshaAllah, in the hereafter. This is the light that's gonna allow them to go across the salat. The one that is sharper than the sword and thinner than a hair. And some will, you know, walk with this light at the speed of light. Some will be, uh, you know, a little slower and some will be walking and crawling. But it is because of this light that we're able to you know, to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and able to follow him into paradise, insha'Allah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallafu istaghfiruhu. We ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to cause us to gain the proper understanding of this very important word, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. We grant Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to cause us to live and die by it. We ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to grant us the ability to utter us before our souls part ways with our bodies. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر فاستغفروه سبحانك الله بحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله